At the Queenstown Public Library, Mrs. Diane Tan watched on as her 22-month-old daughter pulled book after book out of its mahogany shelves, flipping through the pages enthusiastically. The unassuming two-story establishment along Margaret Drive, with its pearl-grey exterior lined with bowtie motifs, is Singapore's first-ever neighbourhood library and turns 53 in April next year. The building might not appear to be a place a child would pine for, but on the rare days when it is closed, the library is open seven days a week, except on public holidays, Mrs Tang said it is as if her daughter's favourite toy has been taken away. Even in a digital world, where information is readily accessible at one's fingertips at any given moment, the public library does not seem to have lost its relevance to Singaporeans, both young and old. Mr Marcus Lowe, a 40-year-old who has been a frequent library goer for decades, said that its draw is as a space deliberately designed for one to read books comfortably. If you can spend two hours in a bookstore, then you can easily spend four hours in a library, said Mr. Lowe, the director and head of strategic communication of Digital Transformation Consultancy Teamers. Mr. Lowe's habit of visiting public libraries has continued to this day, despite his busy schedule and his acknowledgement that it would be easier to read on his smartphone. But he believes that the library is a better search engine because he can access rare books no longer in print. In addition to the National Archives of Singapore, the National Library Board NLB currently manages a network of 28 libraries, including the five-storey Pangal Regional Library, the newest library which opened in April this year. Earlier this year, the library at Esplanade closed its doors for good, with its collections and programs to be moved to the National Library building along Victoria Street, which houses the Central Public Library and the Lee Kong Chien Reference Library. The Central Public Library and Marine Parade Public Library are temporarily closed for renovations. Nevertheless, the NLB also announced last month that the Bukit Batak Public Library will double in size as part of the board's ongoing efforts to systematically rejuvenate existing libraries. With the Queenstown Public Library also slated for a revamp in the near future. The NLB said in a media release on November 17 that as of August, 78% of Singapore residents visited NLB's libraries and archives and accessed its content in the preceding year. This was up from 61.7% in 2022 and 72.5% in 2019 before COVID-19 struck. In response to today's queries on public libraries' visitorship, the NLB said that it saw a total of 16. 5 million visits in 2022 across its network of libraries, the National Archives of Singapore building at Canning Rice and the former Ford Factory, an increase of 43.5% or 5 million from 2021. The former Ford Factory along Upper Bukit Timer Road is managed by the National Archives of Singapore and houses a permanent World War II exhibition. On whether the total space occupied by public libraries in Singapore has changed over the years, the NLB did not provide figures. Still, the overall picture in Singapore stands in stark contrast to some other countries which are struggling to get citizens to visit their public libraries, resulting in a substantial number of closures. According to the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy in the United Kingdom, the number of in-person visits to libraries across England, Wales and Scotland dropped sharply from 335 million in 2005 to 215 million in 2020. There, more than 780 libraries have been closed since 2010. The situation in the United States paints a similarly gloomy picture. From 2010 to 2018, U.S. public library building usage 
had fallen 31% based on a report in 2021 which analyses the performance and funding of public libraries in the US, the UK and Australia. How have Singapore's public libraries escaped the same fate? In a nutshell, libraries here have managed to adapt to their users' evolving needs amid the digitalization wave. According to users whom today spoke to, Mr. Desmond Kong, who is an author and a senior lecturer of creative writing and publishing at Nanyang Technological University NTU, noted how NLB has moved with the times. With its mobile application, making it really efficient for users to search for books online and manage their book loans and renewals. As a writer, any deep into Singapore's heritage has me heading to the National Library, which has made such precious, invaluable content readily available in digital form, he said. The first and most obvious need pertains to a demand for convenient access to the library's resources. Driven by the increase in digital information consumption, the NLB first started making ebooks available for loan in 2005 to address this growing preference and to provide convenience and easy access amid the busy lifestyles of working adults and youth. Miss Vanessa Lee, 27, moved from Singapore to Australia for her studies two years ago. Before she moved down under, she had never stepped foot into a public library in Singapore as she preferred to buy her own books. But since she left Singapore, the environmental science undergraduate, who currently resides in Melbourne, has been borrowing three to six e-books every month via the Libby app. The app allows users all over the world to download e-books and audiobooks onto their devices from libraries, which they are a member of so they can read or listen to them without an internet connection. I like the feeling of having physical books, but now I prefer borrowing e-copies since it's free and convenient. Apps like Libby have made reading much more accessible, all I need is a mobile phone. Miss Lee said. Similarly, when Mrs. Tan, the mother with a 22-month-old daughter, finds herself having to soothe her weeping child in the middle of the night, Libby, not Google, is what she turns to for parenting advice. Even if it takes a little more time. I think having Libby is very useful as a new parent when you're looking for something credible, because everyone can claim to be an expert on the internet. The 33-year-old communications professional said. It's useful to be able to just read on my phone when everything else is very dark and you just want to keep the baby asleep. According to the NLB, the number of digital loans through the NLB mobile app and the Libby app grew by 500,000 to 30 million from 2021 to 2022. Ebooks account for one in three of its total loans. Nevertheless, Despite the rising popularity of ebooks and audiobooks, the NLB said that they hope to deliver an omnichannel experience for the library's patrons as physical spaces continue to be essential spaces for learning and reading. Library goers agree, adding that the magic and other perks of being present in a physical library remain strong pull factors for those who visit frequently. I love browsing the shelves. It's wonderful to stumble on a title of author unexpectedly, it's the promise of a lovely surprise, almost a serendipity, said Mr. Khan, the NTU senior lecturer. This element of unpredictability is what makes a library special. Said 27-year-old entrepreneur Muhammad Ferdaus Sayaswani, who used to visit the library regularly as a polytechnic student. Since he started work, he visits the library less often. If I wanted to read something interesting, but I didn't know what, I can just browse the different sections, read the synopsis or a few chapters. If I like it, I borrow it, he said. Mr. Ferdows, whose professional expertise lies in search engine optimization SEO, added that the internet might not be the best place to discover new authors and books that you like. 
because results on search engines can be skewed. Authors with marketing teams and titles frequently touted would come up more often. So, even if there's a book out there for you, if it isn't mentioned frequently, it's not going to rank high on search, he said. Around two decades ago, the value proposition of a library was that it provided people with the world's information, fiction and otherwise, through the medium of books. Said non-library goer Martin Layer, a management trainee in the shipping industry. As digitalization becomes part and parcel of daily life, the 26-year-old said he does not see the point in paying a visit to the library anymore. But others told today that public libraries' role has evolved beyond being mainly repositories of books. Its physical spaces are also changing to meet another need to help people engage with information on a deeper level. Say Ms. Shomim Nilifor Maidin, University Librarian at the Singapore Management University SMU. In a similar vein, NLB's Director for Planning and Development Wan Wee Ping told CNA in August that the board does not want libraries to be places solely for reading anymore and its mission has evolved into one of getting people to learn, which can be through other means apart from reading. Indeed, Singapore's libraries of today look nothing like they did in decades past. On the fourth floor of the new Pangal Regional Library, for example, there is a dedicated space for library users to try their hand at fabrication technologies such as 3D printing and robotics. Under an initiative called Make IT at Libraries. Just a few steps away is Launch, a business resource centre for aspiring entrepreneurs, microbusinesses and gig workers, complete with a meeting pod where patrons can consult with a startup specialist during office hours. If one were to take a brief walk around the rest of the Pangal Library, the large walkways and spaces between aisles soon become apparent, so does the accessible nature of just about every facility. There are wheelchair ramps to enter meeting booths, printing stations with high-contrast large-key keyboards and even private spaces known as compots for patrons to self-suit. According to NLB, these features were put in place to fulfill part of the role it sees itself playing as an equalizer to society where everyone feels welcome within its spaces. Libraries also have the potential to use their physical spaces to open up information and package them in different ways to suit the learning style of different learners, said Ms. Shamim. SMU's University Librarian one such example is a new children's biodiversity library by SEA Aquarium that will be housed within the Central Public Library after it reopens on January 12 next year. The children's library will have an open ocean zone featuring specimens such as shark jaws and coral skeletons, a floor-to-ceiling column with coral-like features and a video projection of a jellyfish habitat housed in the SEA Aquarium. There will also be regular programs for children to meet divers and aquarists, as well as opportunities to participate in intertidal animal art, storytelling and upcycling workshops. It will be the first marine biodiversity-themed learning space for children at a public library in Singapore, aimed at enabling young patrons to explore the wonders of marine life through educational zones and programs. Mr. Layer believes that such installations could attract young children and their families, including those who had not thought about visiting a library previously like himself. People have to be able to feel like making a trip to the library is worth their while, they need to gain something out of it. In May, the Progress in International Reading Literacy study found that Singapore's primary four pupils top global rankings in terms of reading literacy across all 57 countries and territories in the survey, including Russia, the US and Ireland, which came in second. In Singapore, the study surveyed more than 6,700 randomly selected pre for students across 183 schools. However, 
it found that the proportion of these students who enjoy reading a lot fell to its lowest level in over a decade, falling to 51% last year, compared with 55 and 60% in 2016 and 2011 respectively. The NLB's National Reading Habits Study 2021 showed a different picture when it comes to teenagers. In 2021, 85% of younger teenagers, 13 to 16 years old, and 86% of older teenagers, 17 to 19 years old, read for leisure more than once a week. This was compared to 76% and 83% for younger and older teenagers, respectively, in 2018. In 2016, the corresponding proportions were 71% and 72%. Initiatives such as the Biodiversity Library are important to build a relationship between children and public libraries, said frequent library goers. They told today that their childhood experiences at the library had played a role in shaping not just their reading habits of today, but also their disposition towards life. Singaporean author Amanda Lee Ko said that she had never lost that thrill of curiosity, openness and discovery of physically being in a library. Years after her parents took her and her siblings to the Marine Parade Public Library every weekend, we would lose ourselves for hours, roaming freely from shelf to shelf, genre to genre. Filling up a big red basket with books, authors, and worlds that we would otherwise not have encountered, said Miss Lee Ko, 35. Similarly, Miss Nicole Diduya, a 20-year-old undergraduate at SMU, said that libraries had enabled her to read more widely, eventually growing to like non-fiction and local literature as some of the more popular books that she did want to read were often on loan. To cultivate a love for reading among young children, the NLB has ramped up the number of programs for them in recent years. It introduced the Babies Can Be Members 2 program in 2016 to encourage bonding between parent and child through reading from an early age. Under the program, parents can register their babies as library members and receive a gift pack comprising children's books. Then in 2020, the NLB launched the Little Book Box, a monthly subscription service in which eight curated books for children would be delivered to one's home at a fee of 10 Singapore dollars and 80 cents a month. Since its launch in November 2020, the service has delivered more than 300 000 children's books. But perhaps its most ambitious and successful initiative geared towards children is Book Bucks, a buck-themed collectible card game to encourage reading in both English and mother tongue languages. Children can borrow any library item or complete monthly quizzes to earn points, which can then be exchanged for collectible cards featuring unique bug characters, each with its own personality trait and lore inspired by books in Singapore's national languages.